It was the practice of the Baal Shem Tov to go out into the forest alone. What he did there was a mystery that greatly intrigued his students. So one morning when the Baal Shem Tov asked three of his students if they would like to accompany him into the forest, all of them readily agreed to go. These were Reb Sendral, Reb Yechiel Michael, and the Baal Shem Tov's brother-in-law, Reb Gershon. Everyone climbed into the wagon, and this time the Baal Shem Tov served as the driver. And although he never cracked the whip, the horses responded to his presence by racing forward, and it seemed to the students that the hooves of the horses and the wheels of the wagon flew over the ground. Soon they arrived at the entrance of a pristine forest in a place that none of the Hasidim recognized. Without saying a word, the Baal Shem Tov dismounted, unhitched the horses from the wagon, and motioned for the others to follow. Now they wondered why he did not tie the horses to a tree, and Reb Sendral asked the Baal Shem Tov if he wanted him to do this. And the Baal Shem Tov replied, It is not necessary to tie up the horses in this place, but if you are worried about them wandering off, Sendral, you could stay here with them until we return. But Reb Sendral had no intention of being left behind, and he quickly joined the others walking into the forest. Never had the Hasidim seen a forest like this. The trees were so ancient that some of them were as wide as a house, and so high they seemed to reach into the heavens. Now when Rabbi Chiel tried to peer into the top branches of an especially tall and magnificent tree, he glimpsed a nest high in its branches and saw at the same time a golden bird of such great beauty flying into the nest that he remained rooted in that place, trying to get another glimpse of it. Meanwhile, the others continued into the forest, leaving their companion behind. A little further, they came into a beautiful pond, and when the students saw the Baal Shem Tov lean over and peer into the pond, they followed his lead. But this was no ordinary pond, and what they saw was not an image of themselves, but an angelic presence that seemed to peer back at them from beneath the waters. Now the students greatly wondered about this, and raised their eyes to ask the Baal Shem Tov. But when they did, they saw that he had already left the pond behind, and Reb Sendral hurried off to catch up with him, but Reb Gershon remained staring at the angel, for he understood that it was his own guardian angel that he was seeing, and he could not tear himself away from that remarkable sight. Further in the forest they came to trees that seemed to be shimmering as if they were on fire, yet they were not consumed by the flame. Reb Sendra wanted to stop to explore this strange sight, but the Baal Shem Tov barely paused to glance at the trees and continued on his way. But Sendra, remembering well the vision of Moses and the burning bush, remained behind, trying to discern the mystery of that fire, and he did not notice that the Baal Shem Tov had left him behind. In this way, hours or days passed, and the three students were lost in the mysteries of the forest. Then, all at once, they found themselves back at the house of study where they had started their journey. They could not understand how they had gotten there, and when they looked to the Baal Shem Tov for an explanation, he said, When Moses left Egypt, he knew that some of the children of Israel would never reach the Promised Land. And indeed, some of them crossed the Red Sea, but were no longer present at the giving of the Torah. And some who were present both when the sea was crossed and the Torah was received did not reach the promised land. So it was that I brought you with me into paradise. And the further we went, the fewer were those who followed. And when I came to the tree of life, I found that all of you had lagged behind. This story is from Gabrielle's Palace, Jewish Mystical Tales, selected and retold by Howard Schwartz.